Imagine if we could grow mother of pearl to create a new car paint for Tesla instead of using chemical paints. Or what if we could grow pigments producing bacteria to dye your new bag? These examples may sound like science fiction, but they are science fact. And actually, these are examples of biodesign, the process of integrating living organisms in the design process. So for example, bacteria, algae, fungi, or any other cells. But these examples are still made in a laboratory. And where do I go to as designer to learn these skills? I don't know. And if we want to grow a sustainable future, we need more biodesigners who literally make this happen, work on these fields, work together with scientists. And as a first year, year product design student at the Willem de Kooning, my curiosity for microorganisms didn't start at university, didn't start in a laboratory, but started in the Boymans van Beuningen Museum here in Rotterdam. And what do you think of this jacket? It looks soft, shiny, but actually it's made by bacteria. Yes. I was so fascinated by seeing this that we could literally grow something with bacteria that I was determined to grow this at home. So, I found out that it, the recipe to make this is actually green tea, sugar, and acetic vinegar. And you need a bacterial culture. Via some YouTube videos uh, from Suzanne, the designer, um, I found out that these bacteria could spin a nanofiber from pure cellulose. And Suzanne, the designer of the jacket, wrote a book about the future of fashion, and she met a biologist who told her that we could actually grow our garments in vats of liquid. But I had to get hold of a bacterial culture. And actually, with this nutrient solution, you can also make a fermenting tea. And I found out that in a new aid shop in Rotterdam, where you can also buy other scientific stuff, like incense, healing stones, and salt lamps, um, there was an old lady who had a little bacteria culture for me. So I took it home and quickly, according to my friends, my student dorm changed into an acetic biohazard. Because actually the bacteria eat the sugar and produce this nanofiber on the top. This jelly stuff, um, if you dry it down, you get something like a vegetable leather. And actually, I was determined to be Suzanne's intern. I wanted to go to London to be her intern and collaborate with scientists. And actually, I got a little bit disappointed when she told me she was looking for a biology student instead of a product design student. And I had to persist over months sending letters in order to persuade her. And I succeed, because this is an image of the studio. And during my internship, I met scientists, I've met amazing corporate companies who are willing to integrate these living materials in the production process. And actually, imagine a material which is not woven, but grown in vats like this, where designers, engineers, and scientists work on these new future materials. Again, I was determined to follow the material science minor at the TU Delft. But I got refused. And you know why? Because my skills of physics and mathematics was quite low. And this was caused by my dyscalculia. So it's the trouble of reading numbers and formulas. They said, you should follow a design minor. You're a product designer, you're not a scientist. And I was disappointed. I thought, man, I need to get access to a lab. I want to grow these materials. I want to collaborate with scientists. It sh shouldn't be this hard. 
So I thought, okay, I follow the design and engineering minor at the University of Rotterdam, and why? I had a plan. Because in the same building, the chemistry and biomedical department was housed, so I was very close to a lab. And when me and my group entered the lab and asked the instructors if they are willing to help us, they laughed at us. They said, sorry, you're not a biology student, you cannot work here. You don't know anything about hygiene, you don't know anything about cells. So refused again. We were quite disappointed, because the idea was um, to grow a packaging from mushrooms and from hemp. So here you see an aquaponics system uh, on an urban farm in Rotterdam. And they use, use these hemp mats in the system to grow leafy vegetables and herbs. And after growing these plants, the heap, hemp mats ended up on a compost heap. Such a shame, because hemp is such a durable material. They also grew shiitake mushrooms on these blocks of sawdust. And actually, we found out that mushrooms grow on any form of cellulose, including hemp. And we thought maybe we can optimize their production process by combining the two. So, because we didn't have a lab, we had to build on one ourselves. And here you see me with a Tupperware box, uh, some kitchen gloves, <laughs> trying to combine mushrooms and hemp together. I can tell you it wasn't a success. But here you see me in the lab, because one of my friends was studying at university and I got her login details to get access to the library of the university. So uh, we found out that um, we found out uh, the process of cultivating these mushrooms on hemp. So we went back to the lab of the university and we said, hey, we proved our knowledge, so can we get access right now? And it was bingo. And here you see my old pickled jars, a, a jar for, for my pickles. Uh, <laughs> we had to inoculate, so uh, put the mushrooms onto the hemp mats. And we didn't really have a nice box to do that, so we used these glass jars. So what we did, we put the seeds of the mushroom onto the used hemp mats and waited for a couple of days. And then it became completely white. And this white stuff is called mycelium, which is the vegetative part of a mushroom growing under the ground. And actually, this mycelium took over the complete mat. And if you dry it down and cut it out, you get a very lightweight material. And actually, these are properties of a mushroom. It's water, water repellent, it's fire resistant, and it's super lightweight. Ideal for packaging. And this was our first result. I was very happy with it, but I know it looks a little bit gross. Um, but um, why do you buy those blue packaging in the supermarket with mushrooms? Because it's easy to stack in your fridge. Actually, this one is made from mushroom itself. It's made with a waste stream. And actually, with this process, we optimized the production system at the urban farm. And this was really a kickstart for me to collaborate with scientists and to work in a lab, although it was quite hard. And during, I had to, I had to graduate and I had a serious identity crisis because I thought I'm not a biologist, I'm certainly not a scientist, but I'm not a classic product designer. And I was trying to, to find my new role as designer. So I went back to London where I worked next to PhD students at the University of London to see if we could, well, to find my identity. And I've published this book, Form Follows Organism, and it's a research about this new role of designer where, have, where we have to create a new language, where we have to design differently, where we have to merge fields of design, technology and biology together. And by showing examples from the industry, um, I try to explain the new roles. Your workshop is changing from a standard workshop to a laboratory. 
And I worked with a smart organism who could uh, basically design even better shapes than I could ever imagine. Because this organism could actually, um, based on its algorithm, optimize geometric patterns and shapes. I thought, okay, we are able to grow these new materials, but where do I go to? I need to create a place, and how amazing would it be to create a laboratory where everyone can access, where they learn about biology and technology? And in 2016, I became part of the Blue City team in the former Tropicana swimming pool. Blue City is an example of the blue economy, where we create jobs, where we create new business models, and where we create new products from waste streams and bacteria. And I can tell you, the former locker rooms, it's an ideal place for cultivating mushrooms <laughs> and to design new fermenting processes. And this is where the Blue City Lab is arising. In the lab, we make it more easier for designers and scientists to collaborate. So we have a wet lab where we literally find new ways of using waste streams, organic waste streams, combine it with bacteria and fungi to optimize better materials and make them compostable and applicable. We have a maker space, a workshop, where we literally design a product from the cell to a scalable product. And we have a taste lab where we literally shape the acres of the future. For example, cultivating spirulina algae. We create, we apply, and we share together in an open source environment. And by lowering the threshold, using biotechnology, innovation and design will flourish. And if we want to create a sustainable future, we not only need to design and grow new materials, not only have to design differently, we have to grow the next generation of biodesigners. Grow the future with us. Thank you. <laughs>